what's going on guys this is Paul here with 12 volt review and today we're looking at a Kenwood DNX 890 HD uh, this is a Kenwood 7 inch uh, screen or 6.95 inch screen uh, it's got a built in navigation Bluetooth a satellite or a Sirius XM ready uh, it's got all kinds of stuff it averages around $12.99 it has a 2 year warranty and it's got a lot of features so I guess without further ado let's get this thing opened up see what's the inside inside the box rather and then uh, go from there alright pretty big box it is about, about five six pounds of weight there okay open up the lid alright let's see what we got here we got the attention this product does not support either the Garmin SmartLink uh, or Garmin live services which are designed to work with the compatible Android uh, phone so if you have an Android phone, you might want to read this. Uh, tells you where to go in the manual. And Kenwood is working to support these features. You can also check up see on the uh, for firmware updates to see if they, if they may have fixed the issues. So if you have an Android, you might want to read that little yellow paper. All right, next thing I just pulled out was a little little trim ring. Covers the front of the radio on certain installations. So set this little baggie off to the side here. Uh, let's see, the radio comes with the remote, uh, the audio, DVD, TV, navigation, all kinds of stuff. It's about to flip, flip the switch, you can do different things. Uh, let's see here, we got a little plug-in, it's got the, a relay out which we'll get in, that here in a few minutes, and some other little wires. Right. Right, so we get that here in a few minutes. Uh, we also have uh, RCA plug-ins, uh, looks like for video and audio. Oh, and we got the good old power plug, and without any power plug, no radio work. And last thing in the little side pocket here is the Bluetooth microphone. So that way you can use your phone for hands-free voice calls and uh, and probably uh, voice commands as well, probably. All right, so that's everything in the side pocket. Uh, we got the styrofoam surrounding the radio, and over here in the corner is a much bigger fully figured trim ring. This is I guess this is like for custom installations if, um, if you're having to build a console or or some place where the, the, you have a lot of cut and stuff. This right here will fill in up the entire area so to make it look nice and neat. You uh, probably won't use that but I'm pulling the radio out. Okay. There's nothing else in the box except the bottom part of the styrofoam. So we'll put this off to the side. Unwrap this. Set that off to the side. And let's see, we got a install cage. Uh, most uh, installations on um, newer cars, uh, you really won't need the kit, but this is really good. I mean, the kit, the cage, because they have kits of stuff that'll screw to the radio. But they send it just in case you do need it for whatever installation you might be working on. Put this off to the side. And it's got a little, little clothy cover covering the face, keep it from being scratched. As well as a plastic sticky face uh, cover. Let's see here, let me get this peeled off. And a lot of times when, when I'm peeling off these little things, these little covers here, it, it, it wants to leave adhesive on the screen of the uh, radio. Or just leave part of the sticky stuff on it as well. It's really, really tough to peel this off because there's really no one way to peel it off of there. And as you can see, it's leaving sticky residue on the front of the face and you're like well how's that going to come off well what you can do is you can take the a good sticky part of the stuff and just kind of dab on it and you kind of like push it down and pull it off um, and it help peel off some of that it'll take about a few minutes but it's well worth it if you don't if you don't take it off when you get them driving it'll start getting dirty stuck on there and it'll start looking nasty and stuff so just take a Take a few minutes to, before you even 
do anything else with the radio to peel off all of the little. I mean, lots of crazy squeaky noises. But like I said, you push that and kind of kind of drag it off the uh, front of the face. Don't drag it across. Kind of hit it and just so that it rips it off without you know smearing it or uh, so. That's one bad thing about these little plastic covers, Kim Wood. You know, you know you're talking to out there. It sticks to the face and leaves residue, but it's not a not a big deal. Just you know, just have to get to it. I'm pretty much got all I can get off of it. Anyway, that was the cover of the face. Set this off the side and then. Here's the radio. Uh, let's get it mounted up. We'll see what the back of it looks like. And then we'll turn around to the front and we'll power it up and we'll see what the front looks like. Kind of go through the main use and features and stuff and see what all it has. Because the back here looks like got a lot going on. All right, now we got it on the back side back here. As usual, we'll start from the left side and work our way to the right. And the first plug in we get here, it says uh, ABN slash out. And that's where that little RCA uh, plug in came in handy. That plugs right in there. And on the, this plug-in, uh, we, we have AV input, which stands for audio video input. That's like from like an Xbox or uh, another DVD player or anything that has you know video audio outputs on it in, in this this style of format RCAs. Uh, another set of things we got the AV out. Uh, looks like it's just a video out, but here's the the for like extra screens. Uh, that you have somewhere else in the vehicle, you can wire that to them so whenever you're playing on the radio, it'll show up on the screens in the back. Alright, uh, next here we got front view cameras. You can have a, 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 a camera in the front of the vehicle. Uh, you can switch between each one and then show you what's going on, as well as the, here's the one for the rear. So you got front and rear camera inputs. So you have two cameras. And this is the positive negative camera. Um, trigger wires. You can go e either way, depending on how if your cameras and vehicle, or I mean the cameras, you know, turn off or on with the negative or positive. So that's what these are for. All right, so that's all for that particular plug-in. Uh, directly underneath it, we have an audio video out for the audio, uh, which goes along with the AV output on this cable right here. So that. Between that and this, which for the audio, you have output, uh, audio and video to go from the back or wherever you have it. Directly under net, we have the FM antenna. Uh, you, you're probably going to need a, an adapter to catch FM stations. Uh, up here back at the top, uh, this is the iPod slash audio video input 2. Um, so it comes by default as an iPod, but you can switch it over there to over to uh, audio video in input two, uh, you will need a, if you will require a uh, special cable for iPod users, iPhone, iPod, which doesn't come with uh, radios. You have to be able to purchase it. Uh, right next to it is the microphone input. This is for that Bluetooth microphone I showed you earlier when I was pulling out of the box. And then we got the GPS antenna plug in, um, which uh, I didn't see at the box. It must have. Uh, fell out but the radio does come with the GPS antenna. Uh, I thought I had it in the box it must have got misplaced somewhere but the radio does come with its own GPS antenna. Um, directly under here we have uh, five, you got all five fingers there, five volt gold plated RCA's outputs. You got your rear, front and subwoofer. You can have you know uh, just a base amp, you have a four channel amp, you have a five channel amp, you have a, a two two uh, two two channel amps, bass amp, uh, all kinds of different configurations. So if you have plenty of control and, and, and you can wire it on a whole, a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, this little round input right here, this is for the Sirius XM module. That's an optional module you have to be able to purchase. You know, they usually run around 100 bucks or so. And of course this is the, the cooling fan right here. Don't have to worry about all that, it just runs automatically. These two little inputs, these are for the Idata Link Maestro piece. This is it's a it's a really nice piece uh, with the harness, and a, you have to buy a special harness for your vehicle if there's one available. 
and a uh, and a uh, what's called a, a maestro or maestro, however you want to say it. And, and and what it does is you plug in here, and, you, and that becomes your wiring harness for the vehicle. And you also tap into your OBD 2s uh, or your downlink wire. So that gives the radio. You can see your G force, RPM gauge, temperatures, tire pressures. Um, if your vehicle has it, it can show it on, on a special screen input on the front of the radio. That's an optional piece. Um, instead of purchasing just a basic wiring harness for vehicle, that is your wiring harness plus a lot more for about the same price. Um, let's see here we got the first the top wiring harness. This is the USB with about a three foot cord so you can move it around, stick it in the glove box or down in the pocket or just hanging out of your dash somewhere. And that's how you stick thumb, thumb drives in or something like that. Uh, this little doodad here is for the iPhone or iPod, which goes along with this little plug-in over here. Take you know, the special cable, plugs in there. Uh, directly underneath it, oh, I'm going to drop my cable, wires. Uh, this is the, this little cable plugs into here. This little piggy goes to the market. And it's got three, ca three wires on it. Uh, the first wire is for a relay. Oop, turn the whole thing there. It's for a relay, that means you can turn things off and on, like lights, fans, other things, uh, from your radio. It's pretty neat, you can, there's a little switch, you can program, name it, whatever. And you can press it, turn something on, press it, and turn something off. You know, like if you know, a lighting situation, or you know, if you had fans, or, or something you can turn it on for 12 volts. Uh, this purple wire with the white stripe is your reverse wire. Uh, this wire you tap into your, your, uh, your reverse light system that when you put it in reverse it interrupts your screen to show you whatever your rear view camera is plugged into. That way uh, it'll pop up on the screen interrupt whatever you're looking at just to, to, to see what you're backing into. Now uh, this light green wire says parking switch. Um, normally you're supposed to be stopped with the parking brake pushed in for the video to pop up. That's what this wire is for. Uh, you, you, you can't be bypassed. Um, you might want to look at your local state laws and city laws to see if you're allowed to, you know, watch video while you're driving. Usually, it's, it's not, which you might you might get a ticket. So, it can be, by, be bypassed just by just by grounding it uh, anywhere. But uh, I don't don't condone that. So, don't try that at home. Anyway, that's that plug. And last but not least is the power plug plug in with this fuse. This is the main thing that gets all the speaker outputs and power for the radio. Now let's get this thing turned around, power it up, and we'll go through the features and see what all that, those are. Alright, it's gone through its uh, boot up screen and now it's going to the initial setup. This is to get your radio going with just with the basic features uh, or set up uh, settings. And what you do is you if you speak English, you can click it here, the angle, click it, and what it does is you can set the angle of the face uh, by, uh, just by just by pressing the buttons. And you can also set whatever memory you want. So whenever you turn the key off and on, it will automatically go back to that one screen. So it'll just leave the memory on zero. So just, that's what that's for. Uh, oops, back here. Uh, iPod, AV interface you use, you can use it as an iPod, like I said, it's, by default it's on iPod, if you want to use it for an AV input, which still requires special cable, that's what that's for. Color, uh, panel color scan, as, as these right here, that's what colors, whatever you want those to be. Uh, panel color coordinate set. You can set whatever color it you as blue, uh, hit yellow, so it turn yellow, uh, green. So it's whatever color you want, you can set the, the, those particular colors. Uh, you know, or, or just let it scan, which it just cycles through all the colors all the whole time. Go back. Uh, the next thing we got going on here is the external switch. That's that little uh, wire in the back. Click on set, and you can set a... Uh, you can set the name of it if you just want it to be at SDW uh, whatever, or you can call it, you know, LEDs or whatever you want to call it. 
an output pattern, a pulse, it's just it hits it with a pulse. Uh, sound level or pulse, something like that, and how long you want the pulse to be. Or how, or how many pulses, I suppose. And see, after that, we got camera. And see here, rear camera, um, you select on the other. Our camera interruption, that's the part where it actually interrupts the screen and shows you video of the uh, output of the camera. And then the front camera, rear camera. OEM setup, that's for the, uh, the IDEM Link Maestro. Uh, you can turn things off and on if you don't have them. And also other different settings. And click finish. And it's going to bring me to the, looks like the top menu, which says right there. And before we go any further, uh, notice that the radio has a nice glossy black finish. Makes it look professional, but what the trim ring that comes with it is a flat black. So that's, it, it may be made to maybe kind of match the dash or something like that, because most dashes are a flat black. But the radio itself is a nice glossy black. It's got Exelon written here. It's got the model number. Uh, it's got the little Kenwood triangle logo. Uh, this first button is the ATT. That's not the phone company. It's, it's the mute button. It's called an attenuator. And it just mutes the radio while it's playing. If you click it, it'll, it'll say mute on the screen. Uh, if, uh, in certain features, if you press and hold it down, you tag music so it'll remember certain songs and stuff, put it in the memory. This big button here is your volume, volume up, volume down, to make it louder and quieter. Uh, this next button is the audio button, which uh, in this particular setup, I, I'm, I'm, let's see, let me go to HD radio and I click the audio button. And it takes you to a 13 band graphic equalizer, so you have a lot to play with. Da, 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 da. So you can just run your finger across and change different things, or you can just select each one, however you want it. So wherever your finger is at, that's where it's going to be at. Um, you also have your sub for level control, so you can... So press the map. Oh, I lost. Uh, so you got sub controls. I think I clicked click the green button, so what happened. Yeah, the green bar. Uh, see, on HD radio, even if I click that, it might take me back to it. Uh, the flat, you can also, if you don't want to touch over here, the easy way, you can go over here and you can use this little uh, joystick setup right here. You know, if you want to do that. And if you don't want to touch where you want it, then. Of course, if, I guess if, if you have like really big fingers, you might want to touch right there and it might jump around, so this might help fine tune it in a little bit. Uh, you got your loudness, just load. Alright, we'll go back. Go back to the main top menu. Alright, the if I hold it in, this actually turns on the cameras. Uh, if I had cameras plugged into it, it'd actually you know, show a picture of what they're looking at, but since they don't have it, uh, that's what the audio, the, or AUD button, if you press and hold it in, it does it, I'll press it, and it turns them off. Then it goes back to whatever screen I was looking at. Uh, I got the camera word, it don't do anything, it just sits there. Uh, navigation, click on it, it takes you to the navigation part of the radio. Uh, if you hold the button down, it actually turns on the audio video output, which by default is turned off, so if you have multiple screens, the back, like flip down screens, headrest screens, uh, but if you turn it on, you say, well, those screens should be playing, but they're not. Well, hold down the audio video out button, and it'll, it'll turn on the output for the video. And you can also turn it off by holding the, the button down again. Or by changing the, uh, which video output you got going on. Uh, the next button here is the menu. You push it, and you, you pick different things. And you can also scroll around to find different things that you want to click or choose or whatever. Uh, if you press and hold down the menu button, uh, that, sh that shuts the radio off. And if you press it one more time, it turns the radio back on. I gotta wait. Uh, I gotta wait. Uh, uh, I gotta wait. Waiting. Shouldn't have turned it off. Here we go. Alright, back to HD radio. Uh, the next button is the telephone button, or TEL. 
You click on it, and if you had a phone programmed or, or, or paired, then you have a lot of features you can choose from. Uh, you get your phone book, calls received, calls missed, calls going out. Uh, you can actually write SMS messages from the radio using your phone's service. Uh, if you press and hold the button down, uh, certain voice commands if you have the phone hooked up. Uh, this last button over here is the eject button. It does make a little grinding noise. You think it's messing up. That's just normal noise. And you got your, your DVD player or CD player on the inside. Uh, close that. And if you hold it down, it says open. So I want to hold it down. And it should open a little further, exposing the SD card slot for the map. And uh, that's about it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. It looks like it plays DMX DVDs, Dolby Digital, DTS 2.0 channel, HD radio, and of course the Garmin is the software-driven navigation. All right. Okay. Let's do it. All the all the buttons on the bottom here. This is the HD radio. You got your uh, channel changing buttons. You see, changing changing channels. If it had uh, RDS or on a station that broadcast out extra information along with the music. It'll show like a picture of the radio station, the station, song, artist, album. It'll pop up on there. Got your presets. If you like the station, just press and hold it down. On preset number two, so now that channel's programmed it. You can click the AM. Uh, if you listen to all the awesome AM stations. Uh, this little button here gives me... You can actually dial in certain stations. It may take a second to figure out how, exactly how they want you to uh, dial stuff in. So, there's a certain way you dial in the numbers to go straight to a radio station. Uh, see this little button here? Gives you uh, AM presets. It's sync, automatic music entry. Automate or AME. That's uh, you can automatically program all your presets to the next six local stations the radio finds automatically. RCV is receive mode auto, which is uh, you just do that on. Oh, I don't remember all that. All right, I'll go back to the menu. On the main menu screen, our top menu, we have navigation, disc slash CD, uh, telephone. That's for the. Uh, hands-free phone call part of it. It is Halloween time. Um, over here we got HD radio, iPod, uh, and that's for you know music and stuff, video. Yeah, AHA radio, that's a free app that you can download. That's kind of like a, another style of Pandora. USB, you got video input from somewhere. Standby mode. Uh, Bluetooth audio. That if, you, if you have music on your phone, you can you can after it's paired, you can send music over and the radio play your music for you. Well, of course, here's Pandora. This is the the switch icon that you go and turn you know stuff off and on from the radio. Uh, audio. Uh, I was briefly in there earlier and set up OEM feature for the iDevLink Maestro. And the last icon is Sirius XM, which is like I said, even though the even though the buttons there and you click on it. You still need optional modules, just like the OEM features here. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess we'll start. Uh, uh, I guess we'll start next to the standby. to kind of gives us a starting point. Bluetooth, audio. Just like I said, once you get your phone phone tuned, paired up, it'll show you all the songs and stuff. By default, uh, the rear is turned off, so it just plays the front, but you can switch it to all and plays on everything. External switch uh, setup. I guess we're going to set it up like that. Get past all the other icons. I got system, display, source, camera, software, navigation, auto video out, and Bluetooth setup settings. First one is the system. You got user interface, touch, security, external switch, and setup memory. And of course, user interface gives you like beeps, remote sensors, text scroll, emanation, 
drawer closed. Uh, touch. This is where you can, you know, you know, if you have like different fingers or you know longer fingernails, you can actually calibrate the radio to your touch. Uh, yeah, the security. This is if you want to lock it down with you know, with passwords and crazy stuff. External switch right over there and set up memory. Um, you can actually me memorize all the video settings. Let's see here. Uh, okay, we're done with the system settings. Uh, display. I think we've already been in there. You got the angle color and background. You can actually, if you have a, a USB plug-in with some pictures on, like pictures of boyfriend, girlfriend, favorite dog, cat, family, you can put them as a background on the back of the radio through the USB, or just change the background colors and then other things. Uh, source, you know, DVD setup, iPod setup, USB, AVN, ZMix, OEM setup. You can go in there and make changes and stuff depending on how you want the radio to, radio to run. Camera, I think we've already been to this little thing. Yeah, we've already rear, front camera, the interruption. Software, this is where I believe where you can do your updates. After you go to the Kenwood, Kenwood website, you can download updates to a USB drive and update it to you know, new versions and stuff. So you can always periodically check and see if there's a new version of firmware on the website if you like to have things updated the most recent update navigation uh, nav interrupt speaker you can have all the front or front left front right the volume of the of the, of the girl's voice or guy's voice or any you want the or the mute while they're talking uh, next one is audio video out uh, you, I said by default it's turned off, but you know, as you can go over here to the off video on, and it'll turn off and on that way too. And the last one is Bluetooth. You can change your pin code. Uh, you can search for previous phones, which will, will show up on there. You can delete them. Uh, and telephone up, uh, setup. That's all for the setup features. Go back to the menu. I think I was on, uh, what was it? I think I was in Bluetooth. All that after Bluetooth. So. So that, that was, all, those settings were for the whole radio, not just for Bluetooth. And of course, we all know about Pandora. You got the switch I told you about. Uh, the audio. You got your audio control, equalizer we was in earlier. Zone control, sound effects, position, audio setup. Uh, audio control is pretty much your fader and balance. You also have your bass boost, your subwoofer level as well on, on in here. And you can also uh, put wherever you want the... The, the fader balance to be at. Uh, it was in here, so zone control, dual zone, uh, see where it says front source Bluetooth, uh, rear source, different things, uh, volumes, single zone. So it's all, you may have to play with it to get just right. You know, every setup's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, sound effect, position, audio setup, uh, I believe those are for other features. Uh, let's see if I can get them to show up. Sometimes your parking brake wire needs to be grounded. I thought I had it on there. Oh, that's the background. Sometimes the parking brake's got to be grounded in order for certain features to pop up. Anyways, off of those features, uh, let's see here we go back to that. Uh, was it, and set up, I think it was already up in there. Yeah, we've already done, done all those. Uh, we got OEM features. I think we uh, uh, these are for factory deals. I mean, if your car had already already had factory XM and media players and Bluetooth, streaming gauges, climate controls, parking assist, then the IDLink IDLink Maestro harness would retain all those features and put them on the screen for you. Where some harnesses they may retain the features, but you may have to go to your driver's information center or the <laughs> DIC to get limited information. Uh, so it might be worth the money just to pay the ten dollars extra to get the identical measure if, if it you know costs a little more. Um, 
but it's only work on certain cars, so you may have to look up and, and put your car in and see if it's going to work. Alright, get up back to the menu, uh, see what is in uh, OEM features. Uh, Sirius XM, if you want to purchase the optional Sirius module, if you're you go in there, HD radio. Uh, what HD radio is, is high definition radio. If the radio station is broadcasting, the radio will look for that first. If it's not, then it'll switch it back over to analog. Um, you can go to hdradio.com and look up your town and city and state and see what local stations are broadcasting HD radio. That way you can you know, see what they got. An iPod, if I had one hooked up, but I don't have an iPod, so I'm limited on those instructions. But it would you know, show you know, album art, titles, all kinds of. Uh, and then, of course, play the song into animal video. Uh, Aha. Uh, Aha Radio, if you had Aha on your phone, that'll all make it start playing. Oh, on the Pandora, because this radio has Bluetooth, uh, if you have an Android phone, you can play your Pandora through the Bluetooth. This way, you know, track forward, thumbs up, thumbs down, something else you can do it with uh, Pandora. But you can, you, can, you can use your Android phone, but it has to be through the Bluetooth for the Pandora. And I believe the AHA uh -huh as well. Uh, let's see, if I see if there's any other features before going to navigation, because that's like a whole other animal. I think that's it. Alright, we're going into the navigation. Of course, it asks you, you know, make sure you want to do navigation or you want to come wreck. Uh, the main screen is a where to and the view of the map. Uh, view of the map, it just tells you, you know, shows you where you're at. Uh, where to, you can actually put in, you know, you can go home. It'll program your trip home. Uh, you just have to tell the tell the radio where your home's at. It could be work, it could be home, it could be a your favorite restaurant or something like that. You can also put in an address. Uh, let's see, right now it's saying we're in Kansas, so we're not. But I've been in Kansas, so I know of a town, so I'll spell city. C H A. Oh, and it's Chanute. House number, I'm going to guess because I have no idea. I'll just say 125. Street. Don't know. I'll just say Third Street. Uh, that'll work. It's gonna think a second, and wherever this is thinking home was originally, it's gonna program me a path. With the neat little uh, hourglass there, kind of three D ish. And we'll go to one twenty fifth East Third Street. I'm just randomly picking numbers. I, I, I don't know there's gonna be an actual place. Alright, where else information on it or go? Let's see where we're going to. And coming from. And of course without the actual antenna plugged in and being outside and catching the satellites, they don't really know where to go. So I'm gonna face the north, let's pick that right there, whatever that's doing. Uh yeah, like probably without more information they won't let me do anything. Uh, where am I at? It requires the antenna. Drip computer tells you how long you've gone, how fast you've driven, how slow you've driven, how long you stopped some places. Uh, these are just different window views. Uh, got map layers. You can like take roads off, put roads on. I think you can do a, uh, uh, let's see, trip logs. Kind of keep track of everything. Traffic. Eco route, that also includes the I delete Maestro piece, I believe. I'll do that. Go back. Uh, let's see. Settings. Got your map and vehicle, dashboard operations, your 3D map, map detail, map normal, map theme, Norman, auto zoom, install maps. You can also go in here into the settings. Settings, device information, about, you can look, look at some kind of things, you can also go to the, uh, uh, the Canada website will link you to the, the Garma website so you can download, you know, for now, free uh, map updates. 
because the synth is all software driven. Device, units of time, language, keyboard, units of measure, miles, traffic modes, descriptions, uh, traffic trends, let's see, apps, uh, smartphone link, eco route, trip planner, where it be in world clock, unit converter, calculator, my data, delete uh, custom points of interest or POIs, manage trip log, unit converter, you have miles, kills, uh, so let's say I went, just drove 189 miles, that's 304 kilometers. So you have a little conversion thing here if you want. Calculator, if you want to calculate something, like gas mileage or whatever. Oral clock. Uh, if you're in New York, we'll know it in, in, where you're at in Tokyo, what time it is, you can look it up there. Um, or I guess this is a stage with does not let me do anything so get back out of that. Trip planner, no safe trips, new trip, you can start a trip location, that way you can work your way around or live an old route for you. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's really nice radio, nice full screen, that's the way I like it. I'd rather have a full screen than part of a screen. Uh, I, I like the the, the touch sliding back and forth. Uh, I believe you can also move the icons around to uh, put your most used icons here on top. Uh, you know, like let's say if you had HD radio. Uh, let's see if I can find that that particular feature here. Let's see setup. Uh, I believe we can do that. Let me see if I can find that feature. I always seem to find features in some radios and miss a whole bunch of other radios and, and since this has a whole lot of features I'm probably looking at the wrong spot. Uh -oh. Actually I'm just not sure at all. Well, it may or may not have it, but you can still scroll and find what you want, but I think you might be able to move stuff around. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing it somewhere, if, if, it, if it has the feature. If, I'll look in the manual here in a little bit and see. But anyway, this is the really nice radio, 1299. And uh, it's two-year warranty and lots of... All lots right, of we got it all back in the box. It's actually a lot easier to pack up than some other radios. Anyway, it's a really nice radio, two-year warranty, five-volt gold-plated uh, RCA pre-outs. Uh, it's twelve ninety-nine. So it might be a little high on the price, but uh, it does have a lot of features. Uh, you know, color changing, DVX, DVD, CD, AHA radio, uh, ID tags, fifty watt channel. Of course, most all radios nowadays are fifty watt channel. Uh, you can hook up ID link, ID data link, Maestro, hook it to your car, and it tells you all kinds of crazy car information on the radio, um, and uh, HD radio, Navtech, EcoRoot, Garmin software, uh, uh, map uh, navigation, that way you don't need to have to require a disk or anything, it's all software generated. But other than that, uh, really good radio, if you need to need something like this, go, go get it. <laughs> anyway, this is Paul with 12 Volt Review, I appreciate y'all watching, y'all have an excellent Halloween, and please subscribe.